Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, he will come with vengeance. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, and the tongue of the speechless shall sing for joy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the lame leaping, and the tongues of the speechless singing for joy. It's a a startup Sunday here at St. Matthew's. We start the program year today. And as I said at the Sunday forum, this isn't just like school starting and classes starting, though it does involve classes and forums and programs. When we start the the program year, the formation year, what's really going on is after the summertime, we're coming back together and we are now availing ourselves, opening ourselves once again for another year of formation by God in this place. So the hope is that at the end of this year of formation that gets us into Advent and Christmas and Epiphany and Lent and Easter and Pentecost, we will not be the same people we are now. The hope is we will be more open, more docile, more pliable, more free to move with God by next Pentecost. That's pretty exciting. The fact that we can put ourselves in a place, we can just show up with fairly open minds and bodies, and God will do something with us. It's amazing. It's also the start of our bicentennial year, and are really the start of our main bicentennial celebrations for this year, which again is really huge, 200 years of St. Matthew celebrating 200 years. As I said at the forum again, I won't ever be able to do this again. (laughs) This is a once in a lifetime event for us as a community and um, just some amazing things all the way through this month are going on. So I wanna structure or frame Startup Sunday and this opening to bicentennial uh, celebrations with a twofold celebration in this sermon. I want the sermon to, for us to revel a bit, to savor, to enjoy, to celebrate one, our Christian faith itself, and secondly, to celebrate God's faithfulness to us and how God has worked with us as a community over these 200 years and especially the last 25 that I'm more aware of. So we're gonna celebrate our faith, yay, being Christian. And we're going to celebrate God, yay, God. That sounds kind of corny, doesn't it? But you know, God is faithful and our faith is a gift. And to lean into this, I want to start in a really inauspicious place, a story called Tell Me, Tell Me by the former Hillsborough resident and writer, Randall Keenan. Do you folks know Randall Keenan? He uh, grew up in North Carolina, Duplin County, went to UNC. He was an African-American man. He wrote something called Southern Magical Realism, which is amazing and he lived and wrote here in Hillsboro. And a lot of his stories take place in a a town called Tim's Creek, which I think, North Carolina, which I think is modeled partly on on Hillsboro. The the two seem to uh, cohere a bit. In this story, Tell Me, Tell Me, we learn about a woman named Ida Perry. And Ida, appears to my mind to be about 60 to 70 years old. The story happens about 1970, 1980, that time period. And she's the widow of the judge who is the top of the social hierarchy for this town. And she lives all alone in this gigantic house where she feels very alone. And as the story goes on, we learn two things about Ida. 
One is that she is really, really unnerved by black people uh, if they're not in a, in a position of servitude to her. So she really can't hack them being sort of her social equals or being equal with her in the community. That really makes her very deeply uneasy. And we also watch her coming unstrung mentally. She begins to have in the course of the story what psychologists would call intrusive thoughts or visions. She sees, alarmingly, a poor black boy staring at her while she's driving. She gets into an accident at a hotel party, which freaks her out, and then finally in her bedroom. And the story is about this mentally, mental unraveling of poor Ida. It's only at the end of the story that we learn what was causing this mental unraveling, as well as her racism. And it was that when she was a young woman, her boyfriend, who became her husband, Butch, and the judge, her boyfriend murdered a black boy who had stumbled upon them in a moment of awkward intimacy, if you get what I mean. And be, this was so horrifying to her in the moment, but she couldn't really cope with it, so she denied it, right? Stuffed it out of awareness. And the story is about this reemergence of this horrible memory for her that started with these apparitions of the black boy just looking at her. And I was so moved by this story and so grateful because it showed, it made really understandable, understandable to me uh, both her racism and her mental ungluing because it was all based on her witnessing a horrible violence that she couldn't cope with or speak to or respond to in any way. It's called Tell Me, Tell Me by Randall Keenan. Now you're all wondering, you said Robert's gonna celebrate our faith. Yay. And celebrate God. But we're in a very gloomy place all of a sudden. But here's why. Because of our Christian faith, we do not have to have Ida Perry's fate. It's because we have this faith that we are freed and enabled to become whole and healthy human beings. So, I have some Buddhist friends, and when you go and hang out with a bunch of Buddhists, they might talk about how awesome it is that they have received the Dharma. And they will say things like, we can be so grateful that in one of our lifetimes, the Dharma has managed to make contact with us, and therefore we're able to be more free from the cycle of suffering. So they can say, we're so grateful that we are Buddhists. Right, that we have the Dharma has touched our lives and has enabled this change for us. What an amazing gift. Now, wouldn't it be great if us Christians, as Christians, could say the same thing? I am so grateful that the Christian faith has touched my life and has freed me from kinds of suffering. I mean, there's a, lot, there's a big sense of being kind of embarrassed about Christianity. I know that I snuck into my church when I was going to college, like a God, let alone my friends would see me going to church. It's so embarrassing. But we can be a bit embarrassed about Christianity and a bit sort of, we, we know like some representations of it aren't that great, are really quite bad, and we just don't want to really, you know, give thanks for it. But our Christian faith, as I said, means that we don't have to have Ida Perry's fate. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah does talk about the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the lame leaping, I love that one, the lame leaping, and the speechless singing. 
But before he gets there, he says, God will come with vengeance. Doesn't seem like all that great news, but God will come with vengeance. And I wanna start there with our Christian faith because the one thing Ida Perry lacked in this short story was for a socially authoritative voice to say what happened to that black boy was evil and was wrong and is condemned. And it was because of that lack of clarity in the society with an authority, it was because of that lack of that clarity of judgment that she couldn't cope with it. She had to put it off to the side and ignore it while she became the, the wife of the man who had done it and became the judge and the top of the hierarchy. It is utterly critical for our soul's health that God comes with vengeance, not condemning people, but condemning the sin. And, you know, for me as a person who felt very sinned against, coming out of some broken home and various things growing up, it's very empowering, right, to hear that God says, what happened to you was wrong. That was absolutely wrong. That should never have happened. That is not my will. That's part of what we have to get. And that makes me feel safe. Yeah, that was wrong. That was evil. I was sinned against. And then God says to me, yeah, but Robert, you also done some wrong too. And then begins the work of, yeah, you're right. I haven't been your image in creation. So God comes with a vengeance. God comes with a clear word about evil. And then, but with that, God also wraps us in the forgiving love of Jesus, of Nazareth, dying on the cross, dying as the victim, dying with the victim, dying with the black boy, dying with us as we have died. God comes with that love. So there is that, that clarity but that clarity is given with love, with wanting of us, with even with delight in us. So you get where I'm going with this? What this does, what Ida Perry didn't have, because God says the truth, he establishes, God establishes what's right and what's wrong, but with love, with understanding for Ida and even her husband, and the black boy. What it does is it allows us to see what is actually true, what actually happened. The blind can see. We don't have to go crazy like Ida did. We don't have to get brittle and socially facile like Ida had to. We can see what's true know that we're totally forgiven in mercy, that truth is held in such a tender mercy. And when you see the truth and can own it and know you are held, then you can hear. You can hear God's invitation and call to a new kind of community where everybody is cared for with human dignity. In the story, the black boy, the white people, in James's letter to the early church, the rich, the poor, we hear God's call to make community. Oh my God, that's how God wants us to be human. That's how God wants us to do this. That's how we become human, by making community with each other in this new way that's not about up and down or better, but each one is a child of God. And then, 
seeing the truth, in love, hearing God's call, the lame leap into action. And we begin to have strength in ourselves to do things for God's service in this world to make that community real. Isn't that awesome? That God has not left us actually adrift in this world, fatherless, motherless, but God establishes what is true with love, holds us in that process until we can hear God's call on how to be human, how to live a human life, and then strengthens us to go do it. That, for me, is a celebration of Christian faith, that we have these resources available to us. Now, for the past 25 years or so, St. Matthew's has been looking deeply into its history and has been increasingly clear about the evil that has been there. And for those of you who are visiting the parish or knew that's about slavery, it's about post-Reconstruction violence in the late 19th century. But we're able to see that truth. Gosh, that's what happened. We see it in a love that holds all the victims of that violence. And as God has made the poor of the world rich in faith, he raises them up and gives them honor, those victims, and holds us in forgiveness and mercy. And then we hear that call, oh, we're supposed to make a new kind of community. That's what God actually wants. It's not just that we're gonna have faith and go to heaven. But we get to make a new community. We get to be human. We get to be fully true about ourselves and honor it and know it in love and mercy and make that community. It is, I'll say this, I think it is utterly sweet to the heart of Jesus and the heart of the Trinity it is so sweet that this parish has allowed itself to be opened to see the truth, to hear God's call, and then strengthened, no longer lame, but to leap into action. It is sweet to God. The heart of the Trinity cares for this place, and I just want to celebrate God's faithful. God could have said, I'm done with you, St. Matthews. But God did not. God waited to the proper time, with Lisa's work, Archive's work, Brooks's work. I come in at the last end of the show, last act of the show. He brought us to this place. So yay, God, for being faithful to us. I celebrate our Christian faith, which means we're not left alone in this world, but have a God who is intervening with us all the way along. I celebrate God's faithfulness to us. I celebrate the sweetness of this parish, open to God in this new way. Be strong, do not fear. God comes with vengeance. <laughs> he will save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened to see the truth in love. The ears of the deaf unstop to God's call to make community in a new way, and the lame shall leap like deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. What I want to say to you, uh, to quote Jesus from Luke, people of St. Matthew's, this is no joke. Today, in your hearing, this has come true with us.
Blessed be God. Amen.